I have got a massive bowl to finish turn today. This is a bowl that I roughed in out of Silver Maple on December 19th. It hasn't even been a full year since I roughed this guy in, but if we use the moisture meter here, it comes up at about 11% consistently wherever I poke this guy in. Before I finish turn though, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what this bowl is gonna be made for. Every year my wood turning club does this thing where we all turn bowls and donate them to the empty bowls fundraiser thing. Generally speaking, these bowls will all be silent auctioned off at this big soup tasting event where they are raising money for the food banks of Eastern Michigan. Last year we turned a total of 47. I don't know what they're doing, but I think we're shooting for a higher number this year. So I'm gonna go ahead and pitch in my bowl here. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Trusty wooden jam chuck, never let me down. This is one of those weird trick bowls that I did forever ago where I used a face plate. Makes things difficult right now, and I have no clue why I used the faceplate on these bowls. But luckily enough, the original center is still on the foot, so I shouldn't have a problem with that. Here are a couple tips to getting a really good bite on a wooden jam chuck. Number one, when you turn the jam chuck, I always like to make it concave. Because if it's rounded over like this, generally speaking, you're only going to be having one point of contact, and it might be a little wobbly. If you do a concave and if you make it really, really wide, you're going to get a lot of firm contact with the bowl. And number two, crank up the pressure on the tailstock to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I have never been one to get involved and worried about the way more complicated and nitty gritty aspects of wood turning. One of those is setting your tool rest height. I know a lot of guys will get like fanatics about having their tool rest height set absolutely perfect to get the perfect cut. And you know, truth be told, those are unnecessary. Here's what you're going to do to get your tool rest at a good height. I shoot for about center on almost all the tools that I use. This rule of thumb doesn't necessarily apply to carbide cutters, but I don't generally use those. I use high speed steel and with high speed steel tools, it doesn't really matter where your tool rest is that the only thing that's going to come into play is your bevel so if i'm a little above or below center i can just move my tool handle up or down to engage the bevel more or less and i'll get the same exact cut either way so it doesn't really matter my tool choice here is the 5 8 inch this is actually a half inch bowl gouge they both do the same kind of thing i've got an ellsworth grind the bevel is at 60 degrees and if you get really close there you'll notice that i actually ground off the heel of the tool that gives me a lot more flexibility and freedom with the bevel while working on the inside of a bowl current goal here is to get the bowl trued up and a tenon put on the bottom. Because I turn this with a face plate, it means I'm going to have to remove a lot of wood down there to actually form that tenon. And I want to be careful I'm not going to get the bottom of the bowl to get too thin, so there's a bit going on here. Okay, I think this bowl is either a little too big for this jam chuck or, but it keeps on throwing itself out around. The tenon is running pretty true. I don't know what's going on up here. So plan B is just to shape the tenon, flip it around so I can hold it in my chuck, and then while it's more secure on the lathe, shape the outside. I like using the small skew that I have to shape the dovetail on the tenon. go ahead and take this out take out the wooden jam chuck and put the bowl in the chuck I wonder how many people out there are just sitting here looking at the gap between my chuck jaws and getting in a rage about how that's never gonna stay on the lathe and how that's never gonna work well I've used tenons way bigger than this one with these chuck jaws before and nothing has ever happened but I do want to make sure that this is on there nice and tight now I'll do something like that and I'm also going to support the inside with my live center. For sanding, I have the El Cheapo Harbor Freight Close Quarters Drill, which held up surprisingly well over this past year. 
2 inch sanding pad on a Rolock with a Velcro hook and loop paper, 80, 152, And because I'm going to sharpen anyways, you guys are going to get to see how exactly I sharpen out my bow gouge. Ellsworth J, a block with a two inch hole, and this setup thing right here, which I made to set this to technically what is a 45 degree angle. The math with the Ellsworth jig is different and this translates to 60 degrees on a bowl gouge. Don't ask me how it works because I really don't know. So what I do is I put the bowl gouge in the jig, put this in this wood block to set it two inches out and start up the grinder. So I place my tool in my Wolverine here. And a very, very light touch. What I'm looking for in the profile of the gouge is a nice graceful arc from the tip to the wing. I don't want any high spots or ridges or any of that stuff. I want it to be one nice sweeping arc. And I got a really crude way of taking that heel off and it's something like this. So I can't really tell you how to sharpen up a gouge. All I can do is show you mine. It's just something you gotta figure out for yourself. So here's how I turn the inside of a bowl and it's a pretty simple method, but it'll help a lot. I work my way in maybe inch by inch and making passes with the bowl gouge. I got about a quarter inch wall thickness here and down there the wall thickness is at about an inch. So why I work my way in little by little is that because I have all this thick meaty wood down here, it's going to support all my cuts up here. Whereas if I were just to make pass after pass after pass to try to get the well thickness down all at an even rate, it would start getting really thin and wobbly on me when I try to make my cuts up here and that will give me a really, really bad cut. Doing it like this gives me a little bit of support to make cuts up here, making a cleaner cut, a little easier turning. <laughs> with this right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take it on my chuck. It's got a nice weight to it, kind of light actually. This might be the best bowl I've ever made. It, it is definitely up there on the top five. Okay, so to reverse mount this so I can turn off the foot, I am again going to be using the wooden jam chuck. But to prevent this from denting or scratching up the bottom of my bowl, I've got a ton of this shelf and drawer liner just gonna go ahead and quadruple up the layers on this stuff so I can have a nice grip without scratching up the inside of the bowl. Two layers, that's four, that is five. Five layers of foam. Go ahead, put that like that and bring up the tailstock. Gonna be using my 3 8 inch spindle gouge to turn off the tenon. You notice I'm supporting the bowl as it turns with my hand, just make sure it doesn't fly off. So what I do is just quick snap, and I use the power sander to take down the nub. All we gotta do is sign it and finish it. So I have the completed bowl right here. It looks really, really well. Now I'm ready to finish it. So what I like to finish most of my pieces with is just standard lacquer. For smaller stuff or stuff I'm just not too concerned about beautiful finishes with, I'll use a quick can of spray lacquer. Very easy finish to apply, but this is a big bowl and it's going to be around for a long time before something happens to it, so 
I want this thing to last and I want it to look great. So I've got a gallon of automotive grade lacquer clear coat and we can go ahead and open this up and mix it. Go ahead and give it a quick stir before we pour. I've got a piece off of a two liter bottle. I've got a measuring stick here which will let me measure out the ratio of lacquer to thinner. So I'm going to bring the clear coat up to the three mark and then I'll go ahead and mix in the thinner up to the five. So essentially two parts thinner to three parts lacquer. Right here is just standard lacquer thinner, and I'll bring that up to the five. And we'll go ahead and mix that up. Okay, so now we have got my paint gun. This is just a really cheap HVLP spray gun. Got the filter on the bottom there so that no moisture will end up in this. And I'll tell you how I have it set. I've got very, very low pressure coming in at the bottom and I will take the fan switch all the way up as far as it'll go and then just back it off a little bit. And that's about it. The rest of it is just kind of fine tuning while I'm spraying to get the right kind of spray going on. And we'll go ahead and pour in some of that. To set the pressure, I just turned it on. And as you can see, it's way too much pressure. So I'll back it off. something about there. So here's the secret right here. Get a coffee can, put the bowl upside down on top of the coffee can. Possibly the most important step in a good finish is the tack rag. Just give it a light skim. Not much of a pattern to how I spray a bowl. I guess I would start from the bottom and sort of work my way up in a stripe. What I would say that I know for sure what I'm paying attention to when I'm spraying a film finish is just that. I'm looking at the film, I'm looking at the texture, and I don't want it to be blotchy i don't want it to be runny i want to spray at very light pressure but i want to get really close into the work because the farther away your finish is going to vaporize from the paint gun the farther the vapor is going to spread so it's going to get a very big cloud of finish and that's kind of what's going to get a little bit of dry spray but it does affect it a lot so if you're getting closer you're going to get a nice even stripe of finish and you're going to get a nice film so here we go And the first coat's not going to be beautiful by any means. I'm kind of shooting for a two-coater here. I don't want this to get too thick and plasticky. Okay. So the inside has got a finished coat on it. It is super glossy. Very nice luster on there. What I've done before that finish coat is I've taken 800 grit on a very small sanding pad, knocked down all the texture in the high spots, tack ragged it off, and I'm going to go ahead and spray on another finish coat. So that is it. I do not have the bowl to show you guys right now because it's already been given to the guy who's running the silent auction to raise money for the food bank of Eastern Michigan. But I will put up some photos of the finished product. It came out really, really well. Really happy with this. This is one of the larger bowls that I've turned. And I think it came out really, really nicely. So if you thought it came out nice, I'd love to hear what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe and check back in for my next video. And I will see you all then. Take care.